Well, good evening, and thank you very much to everybody at the Walrus. And of course, thank you to our partners at McKesson for uh, engaging this room in this important national conversation. My name is Rohit Khanna, and it is a pleasure to be here tonight. So my background, just so you know and so you have some context, is in health economics and epidemiology and public health and health policy. And so I come at the topic of innovation from this perspective. So with that said, I'm going to spend the next six and a half minutes talking to you about non-traditional innovation in healthcare. And I'm going to talk to you about why I'm so excited about it, why I'm hopeful about it, but I'm also going to talk to you about what keeps me awake at night and why I'm scared when I think about non-traditional innovation in healthcare. So with that said, this is our traditional, this is our traditional view excuse me, of innovation in healthcare. And it ought to be our traditional view because scientists working in a laboratory with pipettes and petri dishes looking through microscopes is what clinical and bench research is. And that's what drives traditional innovation in healthcare. But tonight, I want to talk to you about non-traditional innovation in healthcare. And so what do I mean? Where, where is that taking place? Well, it's taking place where everything else is taking place, which is social media. So let's start with Facebook as an example. Now, Facebook is working feverishly and aggressively to modify and reinvent their algorithm so that they can pick up user-generated content that will allow them to understand adverse events and side effects, a concept known as pharmacovigilance. And Brendan's going to talk a little bit more about deep learning and algorithms a little bit later this evening. So this is really innovative stuff. This allows Facebook and their team of engineers to be able to pick up user-generated content, be able to code it, analyze it, and spit it back to us in some meaningful way. And so what happens is when you go and take your high blood pressure medication and you feel a little bit nauseous or you take your biologic for rheumatoid arthritis and you maybe have a little bit of redness on your skin, you don't really do anything about it. And then you go on Facebook later in the evening, because that's what you do every evening, and you update people on the status of your life. And you might innocuously mention that, oh, I'm feeling a little bit nauseous, or you know, I've got a little bit of skin redness. Well, that is, as I said, what Facebook is trying to harness. Now, what's the problem with this? Why should we be kept awake at night? Well, like a good epidemiologist, I worry about association versus causation, versus confounding, meaningless noise. How do I know that the high blood pressure pill you took and the nausea that you're feeling is because of the pill? What if you took the pill and you went on a long car ride without your glasses and decided to read a book? What if you injected yourself with Enbrel or Humira for your rheumatoid arthritis and then decided to go sunbathe in the backyard and you got a sunburn? So these are challenges. These are things that keep me awake at night when I think about non-traditional innovation in healthcare. Now let's talk about Dr. Google. So as we all know, Google is doing a tremendous amount in healthcare, probably stuff that you and I don't even have visibility on. But what I want to talk about tonight is their core product. I want to talk about their search engine. Because we've become so used to this search engine that we don't think it's innovative anymore. It's just run of the mill. Well, I'm here to tell you, and again, I'm going to put Brendan on the spot because he's going to refer to this later in terms of algorithms and deep learning. The core of Google engineers work tirelessly every day, and I don't feel sorry for them. They've got a great stock price, but they work tirelessly every day to contextualize and bring relevancy to your search queries. Google 10, 12, 15 years ago is not the same Google it is today. And why is that important? Why is their core, mundane, run-of-the-mill search engine important in terms of non-traditional innovation. It's important because we know that health literacy is strongly associated with positive health outcomes. There's no debate around that fact, and I'll be more precise. We know that people who have higher health literacy have less hospitalizations. We know they use the emergency department less. We know they are more likely to get vaccinated, they are more likely to get mammograms, and in seniors, there is a statistically significant association between health literacy and reductions in morbidity and mortality. So it's important. And the work that Google is doing is tremendously innovative, even though we get on, get on our computers every morning, open them up, and we don't, we don't take a second thought about that search engine. 
But why do I stay awake at night? Well, for one, upwards of 50% of online health information is either incomplete, incorrect, or purposefully misleading. And so we need to do a better job of adjudicating, validating, and authenticating online health information. And the second reason I stay awake at night is for this slide. It's because Jimmy, down the street, or Bobby, your neighbor, is working on a psoriasis treatment in his basement. And through the magic of search engine optimization, he can ensure that his product vaults to the top of a search query. When paid search supplants organic search, we have a problem. Because when you skew search query results, you skew health literacy. And when you skew health literacy, you skew health outcomes. Finally, I want to talk about our favorite rating site, Yelp. So it's fun to rate a restaurant. It's fun to rate an airline experience or a hotel. But what's so innovative about rating a doctor? Well, if you believe that quality signals drive demand, and you believe that demand drives access to care, and you believe that access to care has a trickle-down effect on the allocation of scarce healthcare resources, what Yelp and sites like Yelp are doing is incredibly impactful in the way patients select and access care. And we've known this for years. We've seen slides like this for at least a decade. In fact, this slide is nine years old. We know that more and more people turn to the internet and to friends and family when they make a choice in selecting a primary care physician. This is no surprise. So why do I stay awake at night? Well, I stay awake at night because it's one thing to rate the decor of your doctor's office or rate uh, the parking or the snarkiness of a receptionist, but it's another thing to rate a doctor's clinical ability. If you don't risk adjust a doctor's practice, you can't really make an apples to apples comparison between two doctors. Maybe one doctor is always running late and disorganized because he or she is seeing the toughest cases, the worst cases, the train wrecks, the people that nobody else wants to see. But you can't get this across on a site like Yelp or other sites. So that's why we need to be careful. So as I close tonight, let me just say this. I know we've barely scratched the surface on non-traditional innovation in healthcare. And I know we didn't even talk about Twitter and Instagram and YouTube and mobile health like Fitbits and smartwatches, but they too are reshaping and reinventing healthcare non-traditionally. But I remain hopeful. I remain very hopeful based on what I see. And when I remain hopeful, I think of what Douglas Adams, the British author and playwright said, when asked about innovation, and what I think we'll all be saying in 20 years. I may not have gone where I intended to go, but I think I end up, ended up where I intended to be. Thank you, good night. <clears throat>